lunch will be served at 11.30 uh, downstairs. Um, we have uh, half an hour free time between 12.30 and 1 after lunch. Or you can maybe take a nap or something. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, we'll have a yoga stretching exercise uh, between 1.30 and 2.30 before we, we uh, come back to a sitting meditation. And then 3.30, uh, 4.30, we'll have a discussion uh, circle. Talk about today. And if you have any questions about the retreat, about your practice, um, we'll, we can discuss it at that time. Um, let's see. And 4 30, 5 30, we'll wrap up the, the retreat. Um, just just um, for our information. Um,
And generally, uh, we have an object, we hold something, we let go easily. But our mind have no what? No object. Right? It's only an uh, image. Everything arises in your mind is just like an image. Right? It's like a cloud. It's like a, uh, a froggy day. You cannot use a gun or a broom or a stick to hit the cloud, right? Just let the clouds be. It's calm and it goes. So everything, anything arrives in your mind, don't try to fight. Don't try to agitate. All the thought come and goes. And do not add more. If you see a thought in your mind, do not add more. Or do not try to uh, get rid of your thought. Because you know thought is like a cloud. How can you get rid of a cloud? It's automatic, go by itself. So we have fears, anger, discrimination, despair, all of these things, negative thought is arrived in our mind during our one day retreat, right? But do not try to uh, hang on it. So uh, this uh, letting go is letting go is very simple. It's like if you are a, cl- a mountain climber, if you climb a mountain, you carry a lot of stuff. Then what? <laughs> it's hard to climb, right? So it's for example a person who uh, who he want to climb to the mountain and to barbecue up there. What do he need to bring? A barbecue, uh, some beef, some cooler, some beers, all the stuff. If he carries his in his bag, then what? He's very tired, right? So just throw all those stuff away. If you want to climb the mountain, just bring a sneaker. That's all. <laughs> or some bag of candy, very simple. You can climb up there, right? Or you need sugar, or a bottle of water, right? This is a very simple way to climb the mountain. So letting go is the practice for your whole life. It's not just today, one day retreat. It's your whole life. Just like go back to Ajahn Chah say, today, this moment, this hour, if I let go a little bit, I have a little bit of peace. If I have let go a lot, I have a lot of peace. And it, to right now, I completely let everything go. I have the whole peace for day. So we have an uh, eight-hour retreat. See each hour. Each hour, what in your mind? And in, in the hours, how much can you let go, right? You can see uh, from your mind. Usually in the morning, people have a lot of thought, right? But in the evening, what? Afternoon or evening, they have less thought because of what? Because in the morning, we have a lot of energy. <laughs> That's why we're thinking, right? And then you, the whole day, you're thinking, now you're tired. <laughs> you want to go to sleep or you want to... Uh, uh, let it go. So that's why we, as a monk, we have to wake up very early to meditate four in the morning. Because during that time, there's a lot of thought, a lot of crazy stuff, a lot of dream. From uh, two until five, six, people usually dream at that time. We are in deep sleep. So if we have a lot of dream, in that we cannot control our mind. So the, so that's why be a Buddhist monk, we have to wake up that time. Because at that time is a lot of thinking, a lot of dream, a lot of uh, desire arrive from that period. That's why uh, at three in the morning, that's the Buddha get enlightenment, right? So, um, so that's, that is the way to help us to uh, let go. So um, this is a story about this bu- uh, these two Buddhist monks. I already talked about these two, uh, two Buddhist monks. One day these two Buddhist monks, they walk in on the rivers, uh, go to somewhere, people uh, invite them to do a blessing. 
and they cross the river. There's a beautiful woman. <laughs> she's dressing uh, very beautiful. And she cannot cross the river because the, the river is a uh, lot of mud, a lot of water. She don't want her, uh, her dress to get dirty, right? So she just stayed here and watched the river. And two monks walks by and say, they ask her, why don't you cross the river? And she answers that uh, she cannot cross the river because her dress will get dirty because she on the, going to a wedding. She have to give the, uh, the dress beautiful and nice. So one of the monks carry her across the river. And then the monks, uh, uh, they just carry her and cross the river. So one, one of the monks put her down. And then the two monks walk in. And the other monk, in his mind, wondered, oh, this monk break the precept. We should not violate this precept because we should not touch. Our law is not touch a woman, right? So this elder monk, he had break the law. So in his mind, thinking about this monk breaking the law. So on his way to the temple, the, the other monks asked, can I ask you a question? And the other monk said, yes, go ahead. Did you just know what you, you did? <laughs> you just break the precept. You break the law. You carry the woman on your back. And the other monk said, I already let her go an hour ago. You still hang, carry her here? <laughs> you see that? So even though the precept that we should not touch woman, but when we do it, we do with mindfulness, we help it without any attachment. But the other monk, even though he don't touch a woman, but he's still attachment. You see that? The main thing is that you do everything in this world, but not attachment. If you just do something, let it go right there, right now. Don't carry on your back, right? So today, if you have a lot of peace, don't carry that peace, go home. <laughs> let it go, right? Because our peace is what? Impermanent, right? Today you practice, your practice is very peaceful, calm, and you want that all the time. And if you want that, bring with you all the time, then what? You will be suffering. So our peace is impermanent. That peace is not truly peace. The truly peace is that you can able to live your awakened mind. That peace is everywhere. That peace is true peace. Even though you are flying and there's a little airplane drop about to bomb, you still have that peace. But this peace is what? You flying and a bomb or an airplane start to drop and then what? Your peace is gone. <laughs> then you are afraid. You see that? So if you truly live with your inner peace, that peace is forever. It doesn't matter if fear comes, steps come, the house goes explode, whatever thing comes you still have that, that inner peace, the true peace. Even in a, a time of uh, anxiety, a time of despair. So we want that peace. That peace is you don't have, cannot create it. It's already inside of you. All you need is to what? To let it go, right? Don't have, hang on anything. So that is fairly simple. Uh, topic today. So um, in the sutra say that we have three uh, kind of they have three kind of people in this world. The first people that they rise were on rocks or stone. It's like people use the machine and uh, carving on stone. The second people, they write words on uh, sand. And the third people, they write words on water. So this depends on how you attachment. If you attach a lot, that means what? You write words on stone or on rock. It's hard to what? <laughs> it's hard to erase it. The second people is that they write words on sand. Right? If you write words on sand, then what? You can easily erase it. The third is you write words on water. 
Can you write war on water? Yeah, you can write, but it's, when you write it, it disappears right away. So, it depends on you. If you're a person who has a lot of attachment, that means you write war on stone. If you have a little attachment, that means you write words on sand. And then you have no attachment, that means you write words on water. So for example, today somebody say, oh, you are a liar, you are a coward. Then what? What word do you write on stone, sand, water? If you know how to practice, you write word on water, right? Oh, he said, yeah, I'm, I'm a liar, I'm a, a coward. That's okay, right? Because I, I, I am a coward because I drink milk. Right? Because cows talk of me. Right? You see that? So you see, everything is just, it is. Do not try to attach whatever people say. All the language that people speak is, is what? It's impermanent. It's not true. Right? Doesn't matter what the people say. So, this is our practice today. You can write words on stone. If you write words on stone, then you can bring from many life. If you write words on sand, then what? Probably one life or two life. You can erase it easily. But if you write words on water, then what? Even a sun, right? So. Uh, next time you go to work or do anything in your house, like, try to work what you can write on, or on paper or on, on rock. We tend to write, give a saving box in our mind. People say something, we try to what? To keep it in our heart. Right? And then and later you have a difficult eraser. Sitting meditation, right? It's like erasing. So the more you the heavy uh, you write on it, it's, it's hard for you to erase it. So today, I want you to write on water. <laughs> Whatever you see, taste, smell, touch, anything arises in your mind, it's like water. You put on water, you write on water, it's, it's, it's gone, right? I know you are very sleepy in, in the morning. <laughs> So um, before I end up this Dharma talk, this is a story very funny. Uh, one day this uh, professor, he went to a Zen master to So he thinks he is better than this Zen master because this Zen master is like, uh, he's, he don't have a uh, master degree, a PhD degree, he don't have a master. All his life is meditation and he has a lot of knowledge. He see this Zen master is like uh, upside down, <laughs> like uh, And then um, the, he went to the, his uh, Zen master monastery, and the Zen master did not say anything. He, he just invited this professor to come and drink tea with him. So he bring out three cup of uh, two cup of tea, and he start beginning to pour the tea. And the Zen master did what? He keep on pouring the tea. And he just poured the tea coming up. You, uh, Zen mother, uh, replied that you have to, uh, you have to, if you want to, then you have to empty your mind. So I can see you, right? If you are full of knowledge, full of uh, this in your mind, then you cannot learn then. You cannot make it. So the professor uh, kneeled down about to it. They saw it for this, uh, this chef is Zen master. So Mon tried to let Professor, everything that he learned from the past, he tried to let it go. Or his uh, certificate of uh, bachelor, master, PhD, whatever he had, throw away. So today, if you have a master, PhD, whatever certificate you have, throw away. Whatever you learned in the past, don't hang on it. Because all your knowledge, your learning is what? It's impermanent, right? Those things cannot save you. The thing is that save you is that you have awakened your heart or your mind. So um, before I end in this uh, Dharma talk, I write to uh, read this statement from the one of the sutra. 
say that do not pursue the past, do not lose yourself in the future. The past no longer is, the future has not yet come. Looking deeply at life as it is, in the very here and now, the practitioner dwells in stability and freedom. We must be diligent today to wait, tomorrow, uh, to wait until tomorrow is too late. Death come uh, unexpectedly. How can we bargain with it? The sage called a person who know how to dwell in a mindfulness night and day, ones who know uh, the better ways to live alone. So this sutra talk about living alone. Do not pursue past. All the past is what? It's history. <laughs> It's gone. And do not lose yourself in your future. Most people, what? They think that the future is very long. Now they create, they try to make what future look like. And the past no longer is. The future has not come. So the past, the future, is, is imagination, right? So if you want to look deeply what is life, is you have to live in the here and the now. That is life, right? Life is this moment. Life cannot be in the past. Life cannot be in the future. So each moment you live is the past, the present, and the future in this moment, in the here and the now, right? Do not get upset when any thought arrives from your mom screaming at you, your wife screaming at you in the past, and then this the thought arises, and then you get upset, right? Because the screaming, the yelling in the past is gone, <laughs> right? So if you try to fully live, the true meaning is that you have to live in the here and the now. This moment is true, right? This moment is reality, right? People tend to live in the past. They have a good past, and then they always review about the past. Or they don't have a good past, they think about the future, right? So uh, the Buddha wants us to live in the present moment. That is the reality moment. Do not wait until tomorrow, because tomorrow will never come. Right, that's like a story I already told, uh, already told you about. This, uh, this, uh, this, per, uh, this, this man, he's selling ice cream. He's put aside tomorrow free ice cream. And children come and say, oh, there's the sign that tomorrow we get I free ice cream. So the children, what? They're so excited. They so feel very happy. Tomorrow we will get ice cream. And then the, tomorrow they come to get ice cream, and then the boys say, what? Tomorrow we'll get free ice cream. And then, then the children complain, why you say tomorrow is free ice cream? Why t- today is tomorrow? I say tomorrow is tomorrow. <laughs> so tomorrow is what? It's never come. So don't expect to wait tomorrow and to practice. Practice whatever you can in that moment right now. So don't wait tomorrow, because you don't know your life will end right now, or end this afternoon, or end at this evening, right? You don't know your life. Only if you have the spiritual power to see your, your, your future life. Just like the Buddha himself, he's able to see the future life. But we cannot, we, have, we don't have that spiritual power, right? So live each moment. I want you today to live each moment. Each, uh, each second, each minute, each hour is very important. That is life, right? So if we can live like that, we are always, always what? Peace and happy. That is diligent. Uh, that's why the, um, the, the ending of this is that a person who likes to live alone, alone here is not distant other people. Alone here is that in your mind have nobody. <laughs> No attachment, right? Your mind is always stillness, always at peace. 
if you your minds of have thought, this means what? You live not alone. If you thought you are alone, but you are actually not alone, right? You with your thinking mind, right? People say that, oh, today I have the whole day for myself, alone. Are you actually alone, or somebody in your mind? <laughs> Your mom, your dad, your children, your cat, your dog, your car, your bill, everything, all those stuff in your mind. That's is not alone. Alone here is that you live in the moment without any thought arise, without any attach any thought. That is alone. So I hope you enjoy your one day retreat being alone. Right? Okay, thank you. Uh, we have 10 minute break and then we do a meditation and then we do a walking meditation. So uh, uh, during our meditation we will sit facing the wall. So set up your cushion. Why do we face in the wall instead of facing this way? Because when we face this way, there's a lot of distraction. We usually face the wall. So you can able to see uh, your mind easily. Okay, so uh, you can rest uh, 10 minutes and put your cushion on the side way. Or you can go to a restroom or other stuff. <laughs>